is there anything to put on the record before we get the witness and jury back? Your Honor, nothing to put on the record, but if you, I don't know if you have access to let myself and Ms. Knight into the Zoom. I don't know. I'll see whether Thank I do you. or not. Um, I do. Well, maybe I do. I think I do. Yeah. No, I don't. But Ms. Persfield does. I don't think I'm close. I can't let them in. So, um, Ms. Hilton, uh, on the rest of whatever kind of videos you're going to play with other witnesses, I know we had discussed the possibility of you getting those spliced so that we don't take up so much time running through the parts that aren't getting played. Yes, we're working on it, Your Honor. If you notice, one of the videos we played last week initially was an evidence reviewer video. And if you can see when we change it to MP4, it distorts the video. So we're trying to figure out another mechanism to do that. So that's what we are working through. All right. Well, well instead of you as the lawyer trying to figure that out, could maybe somebody who's in your sort of, I don't know, whatever you call your department say, that does that kind of thing work on that? The we is not me because I am not okay. sad. The we is our graphics department graphics or IT. Department. Yes. Somebody. Yes. Because... We are spending a whole lot of time with you just kind of, and I know you're trying to make sure you get to the right spot and I want you to do that. But if we didn't have that, you know, break every time you have to move to another part, we would maybe have saved a good bit of time this morning. And yeah. I don't want us to have to do that with every statement that gets played. Yes, Your Honor. We are working on a okay. solution. Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> Let's get Mr. Copeland and the jury in.
Thank you. All right, go ahead, Ms. Stone. Thank you. Now, Mr. Copeland, in this June 10th interview, you made a reference that Doug was trying to be like the J Prince of Atlanta. Do you recall hearing that? Say that again. In the interview that we just watched, you said that Thug was trying to be the J Prince of Atlanta. Do you recall hearing that? I guess. Who is J Prince? I don't know. So why did you make that reference? I told you for the tenth time. I'm telling the police anything. And that's what I did. Okay. <clears throat> In the interview, do you recall telling the detectives regarding the shooting of Donovan Thomas <clears throat> that Demikian told you that Shannon was shooting the chopper? Do you recall hearing that in the interview? Yeah, I heard it. And that Nar was shooting the handgun? I heard that. And that Yak was driving? I heard that. And you just said that you were willing to tell the police anything, correct? I think I said they didn't interview too. Okay. And that they wanted thug. Do you remember saying that to me? That they wanted thug and you were willing to tell them anything? I heard them say that they mouth too, so you heard them too. Okay. If that is the case, why didn't you say that thug was driving the car? Um, you gotta be more convincing. Okay. Why didn't you say that thug was shooting? Because they wouldn't believe it. So why then telling your best friend of years that it was Shannon? Miss Oh. You say that again? Sure. Why telling your best friend Shannon? Shannon's not my best friend. Okay. See someone you were close to? Yes. Why would you tell them someone you were close to? Because I, I didn't think they actually put charges on me. Okay. In the interview, you also discussed after the shooting of Donovan Thomas that you, Demikian, Nard, Yak, Shannon, all went to Thug's house at Sky House. Do you recall hearing, saying that in the interview? Mm, I, I probably did. Was everyone in the apartment YSL? What you mean? <clears throat> when you all went to Thug's house after Donovan's murder? You keep going to these YSL stuff like, I told you what I said. I made it up to the police. So going back to my question, was everyone inside? I don't recall. Okay. Now, after you finished this interview, did you go to the Fulton County Jail? Do you recall going to the Fulton County Jail in June of 2015? Oh, yeah. Okay. And once you were in jail, did you have access to the telephones at the jail? They let me use it. I don't know what you mean that I have essays, but they let me use the phone. And did you use the phone to make calls while you were in jail in June of 2015? I'm pretty sure I did. And specifically on June 10th, 2015, did you call Deshaun from the Fulton County Jail? Well, she was my baby mom at the time, so I'm pretty sure I did. And did you call her and tell her about the interview that you had just finished? I don't know. I don't recall. <laughs> and have you had the opportunity to listen to that call about two weeks ago? Two weeks ago? Yes. Did you have the opportunity to listen to that call in the hallway? She don't know. Did you listen to, did I play some jail calls for you with your attorney in the hallway about two weeks ago? You play his car, I don't know when it was. You play the car, I don't know when it was. Okay. And did you hear yourself on that call? I don't recall. And did you hear Deshaun on that call? No. Your Honor, this time say like the tender states exhibit 394 wide of June 10, 2015 jail call. Submitted. Permission to publish. Amen. Hello, this is a prepaid collect call from an inmate at 
Fulton County Jail. This call is subject to recording and monitoring, and your location information may be collected and used by corrections and law enforcement personnel. To accept charges, press 1. To refuse charge for a limited time, visit an inmate from the comfort of your home for only $5. Take advantage of this limited time promotion by going to www.securistech.net and creating a Securist video visitation account today. Thank you for using Securist. You may start the conversation now.
Can you write away? So you told him?
Yeah. Oh, then which one you gonna say? Cause you were lying. Nah, this ain't to me, bro. I told you, I told you this. I get extra like, hey, girl. What you ever be? What you ever be? You just switched the whole thing up. Child's mother on that jail call? Clearly. Oh, 
Okay. After this call, you also spoke to Max from the Fulton County Jail. Do you recall speaking to Max from the Fulton County Jail? I mean, you didn't even play a call for me. I never heard that call what you just played ever before. So I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. Okay. Did you recall meeting with me and my investigator back in June of this year and we played a call for you in which you called Max on the jail call? I don't recall nothing. And on that call, excuse me, you had Deshaun call Max on the three-way. I don't know. Okay. And while you were on the phone with Max, Thug or Mr. Williams was in the background. Do you recall hearing that, Jill? I don't recall nothing. Right. Your Honor, this time the state would like to tender state's exhibit, tender and admit state's exhibit 395Y. Okay. Permission to publish. Thank you. Hello, this is a free call from an inmate at Fulton County Jail. This call is subject to recording and monitoring, and your location information may be collected and used by corrections and law enforcement personnel. To accept this free call, press 1. To refuse this for a limited time, visit an inmate from the comfort of your home for only $5. Take advantage of this limited time promotion by going to www.securistech.net and creating a Securus video visitation account today. Thank you for using Securus. You may start the conversation now. You want to No, I can't come hello. Hello. But hold on, Nate said she right though. We thought and she went they wanna know about the bar. Hold on, so I won't pop that fucking way. Hello. Hello. I see I 
Yeah. And when, when, when he say, um, I thought I assume you all go and you run to me. Right. Um, you don't want to be around here. Um, you don't want to be around. Um, I'm not doing that. You don't have to go live because they probably want to get another money. Yeah. 
Can you identify with her? Song? Sure. 396Y, the jail call from June 14, 2015, with Detective Gaither. And 397Y is another jail call on June 15, with Detective Gaither. Right. Permission to publish? Mm -hmm. I'm going to first start with 396Y, which is June 14, 2015. Hello, this is a free call from an inmate at Fulton County Jail. This call is subject to recording and monitoring, and your location information may be collected and used by corrections and law enforcement personnel. To accept this free call, press 1. To refuse this free call, press For a limited time, visit an inmate from the comfort of your home for only $5. Take advantage of this limited time promotion by going to www.securistech.net and creating a Securist video visitation account today. Thank you for using Securist. You may start the conversation now. Where are you at? Yeah. Yeah. I said my mom here. What's your name? It's a cottage. Hmm. It's a cottage. Oh. Oh, yeah. I told you they, um, I told you they, they, um, that it was, it was late night. What was late night? They, they, your daughter was late night. I know I said she's caught here again. Oh, mm-mm, sweet. Um, see, uh, is they gonna come get you? See what? Is they gonna come get you? They, they might tell you now. Yeah, they, they should call the day or tomorrow. Oh. Mm -hmm. Say what, my daddy? Who's daddy? Hello. She said, "What's up?" Yeah. I'm with my channel. Man, don't just don't just say you're bad for his job. Yeah, that with it. Um, the job. Mm hmm. Man, man, see, you ain't cheated, man. I, I bet you won't take it. No, I said it wasn't bad. Yeah, nah. uh, I don't know. Um, D was me. Oh, uh, what you just said? A D pill? Hmm, yep. You might know if I want that. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, my brother. What you on table for? I don't know. Where he could go in New York. I mean, uh, my name is whatever he is. I don't know how about you guys to try to tell you that, yeah. I don't know how to say, um, they got them guys a lot now, so. I'm gonna, um, try to see somebody get out of the way. You were? He ain't see, um, who drink like you got me. Um, mm-mm. Yeah, you know. Hey, I had go down there because the boy drink things. I don't know, um, trans they trap do, but he had no information on that name. And he told me. But did he do it? Uh-uh, I didn't. You don't have to say? Mm-hmm. How did he do it? Huh? How did he do it? I don't know. He lied. I am. Yeah, you know her. Hey, you know her. That's it. Oh. That's what I'm telling you. You know her. Who's it? Oh, I don't know, Christy. Huh? I don't know, Christy. Huh? Somebody named Christy, she know you were making a court because she was saying something about, um, she told me about your mom and I don't know. Mm. But look, why they say, um, yeah, when I get here in Canada, I'm going um, I mean, I'm to try to see, um, can they, um, pull up other Louis' name and let me go. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, 
Mm-hmm. Where I could say, um, they can Yeah. Being called on um, Jason and Day. The who? See, she gonna help. You said who? I say I'm trying to see if she gonna help for me. Who do you check on? Um, they yeah check on me. It's a who? This lad on. I'm on the phone. Uh, um, ATA. Uh, this is Tyree. Hold on.
me just because you get a woman doesn't mean shit gonna go away. Nah, I ain't saying it's gonna go away, but what I'm saying is, like, man, we all we dying now, man. Man, you talking? And I'm telling you this stuff. Yeah. I mean, that, that's all I'm saying. Like, I just, I told you, you help me, I help you. Yeah. Um. When you think you gonna get out? I gotta go to him town, cause I got a hold on. Oh, the marshal, I'm, I'm looking at it now. The marshals, the marshals got that hold on you to move you. Huh? The marshals got a hold on you as well. Oh, move you. It's, it's, you remember I told you that they got to get an order signed by a judge to move you, right? Yeah. So the marshals, the order is already in there, which means it's kind of almost like a warrant, but it's not a charge. It's just to hold you until they move you. So, like I said, that's why they probably won't get to moving you until Monday, Tuesday. But as of right now, it's a martial hold on you, which means that you're not going to be able to make a bond because it's holding on you. already got the every county, and then you have the uh, the martial hold. So if you go bond out, it's going to be bonded out of, uh, like I said, that's probably be Monday or Tuesday that they move you. I know which little woody it is, but you still you still gotta go through the motions with with clearing your name out there and whatever they send you down there do whatever you still gonna have to go down there. I know what I'm saying it ain't nothing you can do about it. I ain't in Henry County. I can't tell them how to run their court. Monday. 
I try to make it out there tomorrow. If you don't move tomorrow, we'll try to come out there. But um, I'm going to need a little bit more when we go. All right. Go on. Yeah. I love you. I'm, uh, I'm serious. I'm going to tell you this. Don't you? Right. The person you call. Hello. This is a free call from. Hello. This is a prepaid collect call from. An inmate at. Fulton County Jail. This call is subject to recording and monitoring, and your location information may be collected and used by corrections and law enforcement personnel. To accept charges, press 1. To refuse charges. For a limited time, visit an inmate from the comfort of your home for only $5. Take advantage of this limited time promotion by going to www.securistech.net and creating a Securist video visitation account today. Thank you for using Securist. You may start the conversation now. Hello. Yeah. I called Trey. You like that? You like they can't get, but I'm like, um, I had talked on yesterday, and um, they had they had to be the one that um uh, make your phone get so bad. I'm still on seven years with you sitting on the phone, like how you can't. How you can't get no bond off the game tag and all that, but I would act like I was talking to you like. Hey, what do you mean to stop talking to the police? Why are you telling my woman? What? Why are you telling my woman? And you said why I came when you were talking to me? Yeah. I didn't tell you were talking to her. I said I act like I was talking to her on the phone this day. Yeah, he said, wait, well, they can't take my bond away. Yeah, he was like, um, they can't take your, um, take your bond away because you're in the you know, proper cause. So you have a game and tell a junkie. That's why he gave you a bond. And I'm like, I'm gonna call him on three way. But I was like, when I was telling her, she was like, oh. She was like, you as much put a hold on you and stuff like that. That's how I don't see. Hold on. You keep on talking to me. Man, hey, hey, I'm trying to see what's going on, man. What?
Say what now? I said, when did it come? When did what come? When did they put the charge up? Which charge? The federal charge? Yeah. Uh, I believe it was Friday. I just found out yesterday. It ain't, it ain't, man, I can do it. I mean, we, we, it's a process with everything. Like, I'm not going to sit here and promise you, like, you're going to get out of jail next week or two weeks. All that, like I told you. Do your brother know what? I'm not talking to nobody about your case, but to you and who you got on the phone. That's a, y'all, like, we don't, we don't do that. I'm saying, so, um, if they, if they try to work with me, though, is they going to try to, um, work some up? I can't say what they will do. Like I said, everything that you told us, we want to speak with you again. All of that will be taken into consideration. That's that's what she told what uh, the ATF agent when we first came in, uh, lady. Yeah. That's what we're going to be getting. A, a lot of what you you say will kind of determine your future. That's why you. Are you hearing anything that I'm saying? Because I feel like I'm talking in circles. Nah, I hear you, but it's If you provide us with some things that we can verify, it's not up to us to let you out of jail. That's totally up to the DA's office, all that stuff for what they want to do with you. They do take into consideration if you helped or not. And so, so Yeah, you, you have the state charge from the Dunbar Center, and then that federal charge is from the um the gun at the house, what they shot house. Oh, I have I have a charge for the feds put charge me for the gun that they shot house. I I believe it was both of them. Did it was both of them? Both of them? Yeah. Yeah, it was for both of them. So federally possession of a firearm on the federal level for both of them. The one at Dunbar Center and the one that was found in the house.
bruh, that's what jail is. You can't control what you want to do in jail. That's, it doesn't work like that. It don't. We can't make up their rules at Fulton County. That's what they do. All right. So, um, you saying that, um, you don't know when they're going to come to you, man. I got kind of just over with um, Hammer County first, right? Correct. Correct. We've been on the phone. We've been trying to find out what's going on. They said you have to handle this Hammer County stuff first. So, you try to get it done. I'm trying to figure out what's going on in the time frame. And I'm pretty sure you're going to, hey, buddy, I'm pretty sure you're going to call me back again yeah, probably tomorrow and hope you have an answer for you. Okay. All right. Yeah, I love you too. 
this one I done, man. Everything gonna work out. I ain't getting that go back. You know what I mean? So, I mean, I just, I just gotta do what I gotta do to get up. All right. I'm gonna call you that damn tomorrow. Keep it on my other Yeah. Yeah. The phone? Now, again, Mr. Copeland, in this call, did you hear when you told Deshaun they have to make sure that I'm not lying? Mm-hmm. Okay. And again, this is what you told to the, your child's mother, correct? Right. And the day that you were talking about was the police, correct? Right. All right. And these two calls with Gaither and with Gaither, These calls were after the call that you made with Max and Thug on the phone. You shrugged your shoulders. That you're saying you don't know. Yeah, I don't know when. Okay. And the call with Max, did you hear when she said we killed Nut? She didn't say we killed Nut. Okay. She said they seen it. Is the we YSL? No. Who is the we? SL. I'm asking you. I ain't telling I don't know. Now, Mr. Copeland, you've heard Detective Gaither in the interview say that we had to verify what you were talking about. Did you hear Detective Gaither say that in the interview multiple times? Mm -hmm. You should mm -hmm, that yes? Yes. And did you also hear her say that on the on the second jail call that she had to verify what you told her? I guess. All right. Now, is I guess, yes, no, did you hear it? If you heard it, then shit, I don't know. I'm asking you, did you hear it? Yes. Okay. Now, in the June 10th interview, did you hear when you told the detectives that Thug rented the vehicle from the Atlanta airport? Yes. Okay. I'm going to show you what's already been admitted at State Exhibit 332Y. Now, looking at State's Exhibit 332Y, do you see on here where it says Hertz rental record? I can't read. Okay, so you can't see anything on that page? I can't read. Okay. Do you see the name Jeffrey Williams? Point it out for me. Okay. If you turn to the back, do you see where it says Jeffrey Williams? I can't read. Do you know your numbers? Yeah, I know my numbers. Okay, do you see where it says 2014 next to vehicle? You say, say what about? Do you see where it says 2014? Is that the year? Yes. I see 2014, but it's with some more numbers. I mean, some. Letters. Okay. What's the letters? What you mean? You said you see 2014 with some other letters. What are the letters? C O R V. Okay. And then what's the letters next to that? 2014. No, what are the letters? So after C O R V, what's the next letter? After what? After the V, what is the next letter? Is okay. T I N G R A Y. All right. And we can scroll down. And we can stop. Start reading where it says rental location. You see where it says rental location? No, show me. You see right here, fourth line, where it says R E N T A L. You see those letters? I E L. R E N. I E. Yeah. T A L. Yeah. Okay. And do you see the other word that starts with the letter L? It said one, two. I see it right there, right okay. there, right there. All right. Do you see where it says L? You see? 
The letter L. L? Yeah. Yeah, I see it. Okay. And does that say L O C A T I O N? Do you know that to say location? I guess. All right. And do you can see Atlanta? Do you know how to spell Atlanta? I see it right there. All right. Parksville International. Is there a way to say? Okay. Do you know that to be the Atlanta Parksville Jackson International Airport? Yes. I know where the airport is. And is that where you told police that Mr. Williams rented first a Corvette? You recall hearing that in the interview? I guess. I guess you heard it? Yes. All right. And do you see that same rental word? Do you see time? Yes. Okay. And do you see that it reads January 2nd, 2015? You're shaking your head? Yes. All right. And does it say at 9.08 p.m.? Yes. All right. I'm going to go down two more where it says return time. Do you see that? Yes. And does that say January 9th, 2015? At 9.13 p.m. Then what did you say? Okay. Now, in the interview, did you recall hearing yourself tell the detective that initially he rented a Corvette? Yes. All right. And that he initially rented the Corvette from the airport? Yes. And that he actually had to return that Corvette earlier, and, that's, and then he got the Infinity. Do you remember telling the police that? Yes. All right. I'm now going to show you what's already been admitted in State Exhibit 334Y. We're going to start at the top. Does that spell H E R T Z? Yes. Okay. Have you heard of Hertz rental car? Yes. All right. Now, underneath that, do you see the letters J-E-F-F-R-E-Y? Yes. And W-I-L-L-I-A-M-S? Yes. Then Jeffrey Williams? Yes. All right. Next to that, do you see the letters V-E-H-I-C-L-E? Yes. Sorry, slow down. Next to that, do you see the numbers 2014-Q-5-0? Yes. Q yes. If you can scroll down to the bottom. On the bottom, do you see the words, again, rental location? Yes. And Atlanta Hartsfield International Airport? Yes. Right. Do you see the rental time, 1-7-2015? Yes. And the time is 8.34 p.m.? Yes. And then do you see the return time, supposed to be 1-12-15? Yes. At 8.30 p.m.? Yes. Okay. And did you, in the same interview on June 10th, Tell the police that you went with the to the airport when he got the Q50 or the Infinity. Yes. And would you agree with me that January 7th, 2015 is before January 9th, 2015? Huh? Would you agree that January 7th, 2015 is before January 9th, 2015. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. Now, in the interview, do you also remember telling the detectives that Thug was in the infinity and the cars were at the gas station? When the police questioned me back in, whatever time they questioned me, they locked me up and forget what I said in the interview. I made it up. And when I say I made it up, I'm not saying I made everything up. What I'm saying is I took from what I know personally and put it with other stuff. And what I'm telling you is 
I'm not about to say nothing to tell on myself. Like I told you in the back. I was going through a phrase in my life. The police kept locking me up. I was trying to get up for my baby mom and my child. And I was going through a dark phrase in my life. I have sat right here and told you over and over and over. I'm telling you again today. I'm going to tell you every time you keep asking me these question because if you want the truth, I'm telling you the truth. Okay, so my question to you. And I'm not done talking because you keep asking me and I keep telling you I made these things up. You're trying to make it seem like I was telling the truth about what I said, and I'm telling you, I wasn't. And you're sitting right here, keep asking me. I'm tired of it. Keep telling you that. You keep going back to interviews I told police. You're playing the calls. Each one contradict each other. If I was working with the police and I was scared as I pretend to be, I would have been in protected because I'm in the streets every day. I'm, and and I'm, all the people I'm afraid of is y'all. Y'all sitting right here, locking me up, knowing I'm lying, trying to make me do what y'all want me to do. I'm tired of y'all can leave me alone at this point. Y'all, Brandy, and the cars were at the gas station. I tell you, they tell you anything to get them off of me. That's not my question. Did you hear when you said that in the interview? I'm going to go down two more where it says return time. Do you see that? Yes. And does that say January 9, 2015? At 9.13 p.m.? That way to say? Okay. Now, in the interview... Did you recall hearing yourself tell the detective that initially he rented a Corvette? Yes. And that he initially rented the Corvette from the airport? Yes. And that he actually had to return that Corvette earlier and, that's, and then he got the Infinity. Do you remember telling the police that? Yes. All right. I'm now going to show you what's already been admitted at State's Exhibit 334Y. We're going to start at the top. Does that spell H-E-R-T-Z? Yes. Okay. Have you heard of Hertz rental car? Yes. All right. Now, underneath that, do you see the letters J-E-F-F-R-E-Y? Yes. And W-I-L-L-I-A-M-S? Yes. That's Jeffrey Williams. Yes. All right. Next to that, do you see the letters V E H I C L E? Yes. Sorry, slow down. Next to that, do you see the numbers 2014 yes. Q50? Yes. If you can scroll down to the bottom. <clears throat> On the bottom, do you see the words, again, rental location? Yes. And Atlanta Hartsfield International Airport? Yes. Do you see the rental time, 1-7-2015? Yes. And the time is 8.34 p.m.? Yes. And then do you see the return time, supposed to be 1-12-15? Yes. At 8.30 p.m.? Yes. And did you, in the same interview on June 10th, Tell the police that you went with the to the airport when he got the Q50 or the infant. Yes. Do you see the video on the bottom that says camera 10? I don't recall. I'm asking you to look at what's on the screen. No, yeah, I can't see it. Okay, do you see it now? I see somebody with a yellow and black jacket, uh, yellow, somebody with a yellow on and somebody with black on and another person. Okay. Is that a gas station? Huh? Is that a gas station? It, it, she look like it. All right. Now I'm going to start playing this video at 1841.56. And I'll pause right here. In the interview, did you recall telling the police that some people were in a Bonneville at the gas station? You're not getting no confession out of me. I'm not getting no confession. I'm asking you, did you hear when you told police that in the interview? I have no time to get the story together. My question for you is, did you hear when you said that in the interview? I have no time to tell the police anything. With, with no disrespect to you, but Ms. Hill, to you, I... 
running my nerves through the roof. I keep telling you, leave me alone. Yes or no, did you hear when you told the detectives in the interview that they had a Bonneville at the gas station? Yes. All right. Can you keep playing? Please. Judge, I feel you switch me. No, no, I know. Do you see the person walking? I see somebody walking. And we're gonna pause and we're gonna to go to camera two. Is that yet got it? You got blow it up, I can't see. Keep blowing it. I can't say for a hundred percent facts if this him. Does that look like him? I can't say for a fact if this him. It's blurry. It's right here in my face, it's blurry. Keep playing. Everybody here can see the same thing I see. Okay. Pause. Or we go back. Looking at that view, does that look like that guy? Yes. All right. Now we're going to go to camera, uh, camera 10 at 19, 16, 17. Does that look like the infinity that you rented with Thug at the airport on January 7th? I can't see. Y'all blew it up. Okay. <clears throat> Is that blown up enough or we need to zoom in more? No, they don't look like it. They look like an Impala. That looks like an Impala to you. All right. Now, we'll keep playing. We'll keep playing. <clears throat> Do you see that same individual with the black coat walking to the walking to their car? I see somebody right there, but I can't say it. I can't really see who it is. All right. We're gonna go back to camera ten. Starting at 19, 16, 17. 
Can you blow it up? Yes. Did you see the person in the black coat walking? Or do you mean the Sorry, one right here by the car? We'll run, we'll go back for you. Do you see the individual with the black coat getting out the driver's seat? Yeah, I just seen it. All right. And do you see him walking towards the gray vehicle? Trying to stand at the driver's side. Want to go back again? We're going to pause right here. Keep playing. Pause. Do you see the person getting out? of the driver's side door by the car closest to the pump. Yes. All right. And now we're going to keep playing. I want you to watch that individual. And we're going to pause. And we're going to go back to camera 11. You see that same image that was just in that black coat walk towards this gray vehicle. Hey, I, I, I was supposed to be the same person. Now we're going to keep on playing. Starting in 1916. This is camera number 11. Do you see the gray vehicle pull off? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right. Now, in the interview, you also talked about Nard and Little D from Mechanicsville getting out of the Dodge Nitro and getting into your car. Do you recall hearing that on the interview? I recall telling you that I lied. Okay. I'm going to show you what's already been admitted as State's Exhibit 23CC. Is this the picture of NAR that they showed you in the interview room? I don't remember what picture they showed me. I can't, I can't recall what picture they showed me. Is this the NAR that you were talking about getting into your car? Uh, I lied when I said NAR got in my car. Is this NAR? Is this the NAR you were lying on? I know him. To, I know his name to be NAR. Now, you also talked about them getting out of the Dodge Nitro. Do you remember hearing yourself say that in the interview? I probably did. All right. I'm going to show you what's already been admitted state exhibit 22CC. Looking at 22cc, do you see the white vehicle to the top left-hand side of the screen? At the gas station? At the gas station. Yeah, I see it. Is that the Dodge Nitro that belongs? That Does that look like the Dodge Nitro that OG Bentley owned? Shoot, sure. Does it look like the Dodge Nitro that the Mikion and NAR got out of 
on June, June on June 10, 2015. I can't tell you this. I, I can't tell what kind of cut it is. Now I'm going to show you what's Arvin admitted Stacey did with 10 cc. Is that OG Bentley? I don't know him. Okay. Is that not the same person as you said got rid of all the guns in the car on the night of Donovan Thompson? I'm, I'm, I'm good at lying. Very good at it. All right. Do you know if OG Bentley back in 2015 lived off of Oak Drive? I don't know him. Now, Mr. Copeland, after you were arrested in June of 2015, you went to the feds for five years, correct? Correct. And after that, you, when you were released from the feds, you came back to Atlanta, correct? Right. Now, in October of 2021, you were arrested on traffic violations and possession of a gun, correct? There's some charges y'all put on me. Okay. So you were arrested? Yeah, I put them on me. Okay, so yes, you were arrested? Yes. And after you were arrested, you were brought to the Atlanta Police Department headquarters? Right. Okay. And at the headquarters, you were placed in the interview room? Right. And during that interview, did you speak with Investigator Viverito? Right. And at other times, um, did you speak with an Investigator Flores and an Investigator Kettle? Right. All right. Yeah, why don't we actually take a um, restroom break? And then do you, are you going to want me again, potentially? Okay. Go ahead. Guests will be taking a recess, and then after the recess, you can, if you need to put anything on the record, put it on the record, since half the people are gone from the courtroom at this point anyway. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I had an opportunity to have a conversation with uh, the state uh, just before, just right at the break. Right. We, we, we did agree that uh, they're not going to go into uh, certain parts of the interview from October 27, 2021 with uh, Mr. Kenneth Copeland. However, I do believe that they are intending to ask uh, Mr. Copeland on the witness stand about some alleged plot to, uh, to murder uh, Shell Kell, if you would. And um, I believe that there's going to be some line of questioning that's going to be directed to Mr. Huey or concerning Mr. Huey. Okay. And uh, I'm concerned, Your Honor, that that particular line of question, first of all, it's not in any overt act that's been uh, listed in the indictment. It's not uh, a count in the indictment. Uh, it's not been listed in any type of intrinsic act that they're trying to get into. So I'm going to ask the court to weigh in on this one with respect to uh, it being a 403 uh, issue for the court to consider. It's going to be hard for us to even, even if I cross examine him and say, hey, you know, you know anything about this? I told you I lie. I told you I lie. 
but it's been said, and there's no way for me to be able to cross him on that other than just to ask him about it. The jury will have already heard that information come out, and there's just no foundation for me to be able to delve into this particular witness if they ask him, well, did you try to talk Mr. Healy out of this or out of that particular act? So, Your Honor, I believe based upon that information that the state is telling me that they may get into, I don't believe that there's no real foundation to get into it because I can't do anything with that particular questioning other than ask this witness who we've already seen, doesn't recall, doesn't remember, so forth and so on. So, Ms. Hilton, what is it that you would potentially be eliciting from Mr. Copeland? So, let me give some context. So, in October of 2021, specifically October 27, 2021, Mr. Copeland was arrested on traffic violations and a gun charge. When he, after being arrested, he was brought to the Atlanta Police Department headquarters and Mirandized and interviewed. In the course of that interview, he was trying to get out of jail. So, he told the police he had information for them that would be helpful to them. He proceeds to tell them about a potential plot that was going to happen that evening to kill Shell Kell at a club called Diamonds. I think it might be called Diamonds of Atlanta or Diamonds, which is off of Northside Drive. He tells the police that he did not want to go into full details about what he knew because he was concerned that the police would not help him out because he reverts back to 2015, advising that he had given information in 2015 and the police did not help him. So, he was willing to call the people who might be involved in this potential plot to kill Shell Kell on FaceTime and let those individuals kind of talk about the plot in front of the police. The individuals that he was going to call, eventually he ended up saying it was going to be Quay, and we believe that to be Marquavious Huey, and someone that he said was 44 Savage, who was the Levante Fleetwood. You know, he talked about what he could do. You know, you can set me up in a room. I'll call him on FaceTime. And then he proceeded to let the police know that he's advised Quay on several occasions that he shouldn't do things for Thug, that Thug wasn't going to help him out, and that this wasn't, you know, this is not something he should do. Eventually, nothing happened. Shell Kell was never, nothing happened to Shell Kell that evening. And was there a FaceTime call in the midst of this interview? No, they did not do the FaceTime call during the midst of the interview. And so what's the point of eliciting all of this? The point to elicit was that he was willing to give up information again about a plot that he was aware of. Again, this plot to have the rival person that we've been talking about for a number of months, Shell Kell, to be killed, which I think is relevant because, again... Do you have some other evidence that there was a plot that evening to kill Shell Kell? I believe, and I'll have to confirm with Investigator Viveruto, that there was some information that Shell Kell was having an event at that club. That's about it. That's about as far as that goes. I don't see, I think 403 is going to keep that up. Okay. Can I go into the fact that Mr. Coburn wanted to advise Quay, not necessarily about not doing this particular act, but the fact that he wants to advise Quay of not hanging with the, to not fall into his trap. He says at some point Quay would be willing to do anything for Thug, and he's trying to advise him against that. Because I think that that is important, especially given his whole testimony here that he lied on Thug, he did all these things. I think it's important that he's advising another YSL member later on, years later, not to 
do what he's done or not to fall into the same um, trap that he's done. And then we do have evidence of Mr. Huey being willing to do anything for Thug. We have his text messages and when she's communicating with Thug saying... All right, give me a minute. Judge, Matthews. just real briefly, just on that same point that the court has just ruled on, I just want to add that during that interview, Your Honor, there was no uh, first and last name of a Mark Quavius Huey. It was just a Quay. Mm -hmm. And then secondly, Your Honor, there was never any photographic process where Viverito says, hey, is this the Quay you're talking about here? Uh, what, so we can be clear what Quay, which Quay. So that's also in the interview. There's nothing to say that they're actually referring to Mark Quavius Huey. In the interview, Your Honor, she does talk about Quay and where he is from. And he says, Quay, he's known him for a long time. He's from Jonesboro South. And I think that's giving Viverito will be able to testify when she comes that the Quay that she was referencing was Mark Quavius Huey and it wasn't another. It wasn't Quarmavius Nichols. It was Quay. And we have pictures and photographs um, of Mark okay. Quavius Huey and Kenneth Copeland together. And then we also have incidents. They're not going to come in now. Um, but in 2020, with Copeland and Marquavius Huey and Tanquarius Mender getting into conflict with um, some... I, I assume you have um, some kind of evidence that uh, Mr. Huey is from the Jonesboro area and that Ms. Nichols is not, such that when D Detective Viverito says, you know, Quay from the Jonesboro area, that triggers to Mr. Copeland, oh, yeah. Mr. Huey, not Mr. Nichols, or there's no indication that Mr. Copeland knows Carmavius Nichols. I don't have okay. any. Well, I don't know. I mean, they're all co-conspirators together. Correct, correct. Um, but Mr. Oh, Copeland was in custody a good number of the time okay. when Carmavius Nichols. All right, so I, I think that'll be able to be cleared up. Um, so yeah, it's if you want to add, you know, elicit that. Um, Mr. Copeland, at least in this interview at some point, whether he did or not, says that he did advise Quay not to do things for Thug. That's fine. Okay. And then you're right, it relates to the other point, I'm, and I understand, of course, ruling on the alleged plot. I will also say um, that Detective Everito advised that. They did send Mark units up to the club to prevent anything from occurring. Okay, so, anything which maybe was going to happen and maybe nobody on earth had planned. So, okay, that's great. Thanks for clarifying that for the record, Mr. Harvey. But then do we get any instruction at this particular point, if it comes in, that it is not Mr. Nichols? No, and if either of you want to ask, if any of y'all want to ask him, well, what point do you think we were talking about there? You can. Thank you. Well, I, I mean, I don't know what it was. I, I mean, the state is affirmatively saying that it is not Mr. Nichols. So I don't think it's my obligation to get up and say, hey, it's not Mr. Nichols with Mr. Copeland, who has got nothing to do with Mr. Nichols. If we all agree that it's not Mr. Nichols, then I think that should be expressed at this particular time. If I get to that line of question, I don't even know if Mr. At this point, Mr. Copeland is going to um, where we're going to go with this line of question. If he's going to respond, I do have a picture of him, Quay, Marquavius, who is Aquarius Mender that I intend to introduce through him. Okay, and if you can, to, if you you can say, hey, when you and the detective were talking about Quay, is this the Quay you meant? God, no idea what he's going to say, but correct. I mean, so okay. All right. Yes, sir. Your Honor, um, the volley that just occurred, that is commenting on Mr. Williams' future dangerousness. It is it's, asking Mr. Copeland. It's not going to come in. Okay. The question, that's, I misunderstood. I thought you said that Mr. Copeland could be asked um, that he gave advice to Mr. Huey to stay away from Mr. Williams. That Mr. Don't don't commit crimes for Mr. Williams. Not, not don't commit crimes for Mr. Williams. I did not understand that to be what he had said. But thanks for the clarification. Let's make sure. When you're talking about that part of the interview, what exactly is being said?
So in the interview, Your Honor, I have Mr. Copeland telling the, telling the detectives, I mean, I ain't got no reason to lie. You know what I mean? I told Quay time after time, hey man, stop being stupid. I mean, like, you tripping and you dumb as hell, bro. I tell him time after time, after time, after time. We had a conversation last night. Um, I mean, he he is referencing doing things for the like he. That's kind of what the gist of why he's telling Quay, "Don't be stupid. Don't do these things for." I can't say specifically, and this is the part that you ruled out, Your Honor, is that. What we don't need to talk about the part where I ruled out. But right. I'm talking about the parts that might still be in that you just referenced for me. Do you want to? I'm, do I have a copy of this transcript so that I can look at it? I don't think so. But do you want to hand it up to me and say I'm planning to elicit or potentially elicit pages? You know, whatever it is, two fifty through two sixty, or and I'll take a quick look. Or Mr. Nichols is, uh, uh, sorry, Mr. Steele, is that part in? I, I, I'm, I'm kind of working from a deficit here since I don't have this statement in front of me. But y'all all do, so. You may. Of October twenty twenty one. All right. Where am I supposed to be looking? So on page one twelve. Starting at line eight, it says. You don't have to read it to me. I have it in front of me now. But some days I'm unintelligible, so I was fine. Oh. But it's not actually unintelligible. You know what it's going to say? Yes. Okay. So starting at line eight, it says, But Quay, he tells me every single thing. And then there is like, mm hmm, and everything else. Sure, I'm sorry. On. Page 112, line 8, it says, But Quay, he tells me every single thing. And then line 10 says, Mm hmm. And then line 12 is Kenneth Copeland. Most of it you can return. So, are any of the unintelligibles don't commit crimes for thug or something to that effect or something really close to that? Or are they just man? Stop doing stuff for him. It's generally not to do stuff and not to be a gopher for Thug. All right, Mr. Steele, I mean, you've, I'm sure, listened to it. Do you believe there to be something that comes too dangerously close to what you would object to? Yes, but I don't object to the gopher. If that's how it comes out through investigative Viverito, that's fine. But I don't believe that's the spirit of what they're talking about. The, um, the specific... The specific thing that he was referencing was what you just kept out, which is it was Copeland's assertion that Thug wanted Quay and 44 Savage to kill Shell Cal. That part is out. Outside of that, what Copeland would is telling the telling Viveriso is that he was advising Quay not to be stupid, not to do stuff for him, not to do those things for him. But the only specific, specific thing that she referenced was Thug wanting Quay and 44 Savage to kill Shell Cal. And he also says at some point in the interview that um, Thug wants Shell Cal dead. I mean, along the lines of what you just said, I wasn't going to go into that, but... This is what Copeland is saying that Thug isn't going to stop. Thug is not going to stop until Shell Kelly's dead. I mean, those are things that he says. But given what 
It was just ruling. I wasn't going to ask him those specific things. Okay. Well, that wasn't my ruling, but you, here you go. So it does not. It does not sound like that's going to come out. Somebody can. All right, we somewhat clear. Oh. Yeah, yes. <laughs> okay. All right, we ready to get Mr. Copeland back in and the jury out? Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Go ahead, Miss Hilton. Permission to approach your honor? You may. I'm going to show you what's been marked as they say 378 YF1. Tell me, do you see yourself in that picture? Yeah. You also see Investigator Vivarito in that picture? Yeah. Um, and do you see a date on that picture at the top? Yeah. Is that October 27th, 2021? Yeah. And is do you call that being the interview that you had after you were arrested in October 2021? Yeah. Your Honor, this time the state would like to tender State's Exhibit 378YF1 into evidence. Okay. Is that what you mean? Just for, the photograph? For right now, just the All right, that's admitted. Now, in this interview, do you remember your interview or speaking with um, Investigator Rito? Yes. All right. In that interview, did you talk to Investigator Viverito? about information that you gave back in 2015? Uh, I talked to her about a lot, but I can't recall exactly. Okay. Do you remember being concerned about helping the police out in this interview because you didn't think the police helped you out back in 2015? Yes. Okay. And isn't it true in this 2021 interview you did not think that police helped you when you told them about everything that happened with Nuts' murder. Well, I knew they weren't going to help me up because uh, they knew I was mad. They just were going along with me, not me thinking I was going to fall for it. Isn't it true that you believed in this interview that after you told police about Nuts' murder, you were tortured? <laughs> you know, I ain't never been tortured. 
Okay. Isn't that what you told Detective David Rito in this October 2021 interview? You watch my interviews, you're going to see I'm always playing like I'm the victim. I'm always talking about what people did to me. I'm never talking about what I did back to people. Okay. I'm asking you, did you tell Investigator David Rito in this October 21 interview that you felt as though you were tortured because... Did you ask, tell Investigator David Rito that you felt that you were tortured because you talked about... Donovan Thomas's murder. I probably told her that I was like I told you, they got me again. Handcuffs on my wrist. It's time for me to work my magic. Did you also in this interview felt as though back in 2015 you told them everything that you knew about Donovan Thomas, but no one helped you out? If I had any truth to speak about 2015, we wouldn't be doing this today. Okay. Is it true that in this October 2021 interview, you told Investigator Rivo, Investigator Rito, I gave y'all the information and what did that do for me? Nothing, nothing, man. Yeah, I said it. Now, back in 2021, did you still believe that Thug was concerned that you were talking to the police? Uh, I never had no belief about Thug being concerned about me talking to the police. It's just something I told the police. If I made the police believe that me and Thug was in it, they would more likely think that, okay, they, they, they went in for exactly what I wanted them to go for. Isn't it true that you thought that Thug wanted you dead in 2021 because you were talking to the police? No. If I feel like somebody wanted me dead, I'd be on them. Isn't it true that Investigator Viveriso in this 2021 interview asked, He wants you dead. Your response is, yo, you didn't know that. And she says, that, why would he want you? And your response was, and she said, why would he want you dead? And your response is because of this, because sitting here talking to y'all. But to be, to, I'm not even gonna do it to you. I tell the police anything. Now, with Investigator Viverito, that wasn't your first time meeting Investigator Viverito, correct? No, it was. Okay, she was your probation officer, correct? No, nah, she wasn't my probation officer. How did, how long had you known Investigator Viverito in this interview? From when she was a probation officer. From when she was a probation yeah. officer. And at any point in time, was she your probation officer? Can you say that again? At any point in time, was she ever your probation officer? Uh, she, you might well have said she always back to me. Okay. And about how long in this interview had you known Investigator Rivers? In October of 2021, about how long had you known her? I don't keep up with it. Okay. Had you known her for more than a year? Yeah. More than two? So I did. I, I did 51 months in the feds. I didn't know her before. I think before I went to the feds, I, I don't know when I first... Oh. I'm sorry, you said you knew her before you went to the feds? I've been knowing about her. Now, isn't it true, um, back in 2021, did you talk to a number of your friends on FaceTime? Um, not then. I see before y'all brought me in this courtroom, in the past, was the truth. Besides the little pieces that I tried to finish the police with to get off of me. So when you were speaking with Investigator River Rito in this October 2021 interview, are you saying that nothing you said in here was true? Uh, I ain't saying it. You see, you're trying to make it seem like I'm saying the whole interview is not true. What I'm saying is to convince them, you got to tell them a little bit what you think they know. And look, I'm not about to go back and forth to you. 
I mean, like. So I'm asking you a very specific question. In the October 2021 interview, are you saying that you could tell investigator Riverisa what she wanted to hear as well? I don't recall. Now, during the course of this interview, um, did you speak with investigator Riverito about Quay? I don't recall. Okay. And I want to show you. I'm going to show you what the market said did it. 398. Why? Do you recognize uh, who's in State's Exhibit 398? Why? Do you recognize the people in that picture? Yes. Okay. Who is in that picture? Me and Quay. Okay. Do you recognize the other individual? I can't see your face. Okay. Do you recognize the Instagram name Stunner underscore six zero? Um, I don't keep up with people's Instagram. Okay. Do you know that to be another Nard, Tinquarius Mender? I know another Nard. Did you know him to have an Instagram name of Stunner? I don't, I don't keep up with people's social media. Okay. And, and looking at 398Y, can you tell that other person is Nard, the other Nard that you know? Yeah. Yes, that's him? I don't know. You're right, this time I say like 10 to stations in 398. Why is that evidence? Admitted. All right. Permission of public. Nay. Now, back in 2021 or 2020, did you have the Instagram name of 725 underscore Woody? That's what it looked like. So, is that your Instagram handle? Uh, I had so many Instagram pages. Let me ask you this. If you had so many, is your birthday July 25th? For sure. And they call you Woody, correct? They call me who? Woody. Woody. Who? I can't hear you. Woody. Okay. Is that correct? Yeah. All right. Is this a picture that you posted on your Instagram page? What you mean? Is that a post that you made on your Instagram page? The 725 Woody. God bless you. Uh, what you say? Is this that picture that is posted that says 725 I, I, Woody? I don't, I don't remember posting this picture. Okay. Do you remember taking a picture like this? You say T? Do you remember taking a picture with like this. Oh yeah, I, took, I, I remember this picture. Okay, and in this picture, who's all in the picture? You just said Quay and Art. Okay, but the picture wasn't on the screen, so is Quay the person with the green sweatshirt around his waist? Mm -hmm. Is that a yes for the record? Yes. Okay. And I'm are sorry. you the one person in the middle with the pink hoodie? And Noah with the blue. Okay, thank you. And if I wanna go down, And does the caption say three of a kind? And it tags Quay and it tags Stunna with a green heart emoji and a gray snake. Do you see that? Yeah, I see it. Okay. And it says, I am the streets out now on all platforms. Does that say that? I guess. Okay, what is I am the streets? Yeah, ask who, who made the caption. Isn't that you who made the caption? No, I just told you that I remember the picture, but I don't, I didn't post it. I don't know nothing about it. Okay, so 725 underscore Woody. I also have my, like, other people post on my page, my manager. Did you have a song or an album cut out called I Am I said other people had posted on, on my page, so they could have posted it. And I'm asking you, have you had an album or something called I Am The Streets? Um, yeah. All right, thank you. Now, 
in this interview, did you ever talk to Investigator Riverito about conversations you had with Thug about um, that the police were going to be watching him? I don't recall. You said, you said, I had, can you say that again? Sure. Back in 2021, did you ever have conversations with Thug about the police telling Thug that the police were going to get him? So you're saying in 2021, I told Thug that the police were going to get him? Do you recall ever having any conversations with Thug saying that the police were going to get him? I thought you said I was concerned about him killing me. That's not my question. My question. I'm just saying, if I was, if I'm concerned about him kidding me from 2015, why would I be around him in 2021? So is your testimony today that you don't recall having any conversations with Thug about the police wanting to get him? No, my, my testimony today is that when investigators get to me, I'm trying to convince them that I'm around him and that I can tell them stuff that make them think that I'm, I'm right there and I know what I'm talking about. It's proof of, like I said. Me making things up. Okay. So, do you recall in the same October 2021 interview telling Investigator Viverito, I go around the, I hear him talk stupid. I tell him, I tell him they're going to get you. Investigator Viverito says, you said what? You said, I told them they're going to get you. She said, who, thug? You said, yeah, I told him. Investigator Viverito says, like the police? And you said, yeah, I said they're going to get you. I said, all that shit you're doing, they're going to get you. And what does he say? He says, shit, like I know. And investigator the reader asked, so you don't care? And you said, no, he don't. Do you recall having that conversation with investigator the I, I probably did tell her that, but I was just, I was just stating it to you so that you can see that, you know, well, like I was just telling you, like, I'm just making it up as I go. Okay. And that, did you also go and tell, tell Investigator Riverito that you told Thug, I said, you put all this stuff in your songs, they're going to be watching you for five, six, seven years. I told them that they're going to be watching you. I have had no dealings with Thug once I got the feds. So when they got me again, back to the routine, put the blame on Thug, y'all let me go. And you keep saying you put the blame on Thug. What blame did you put on Thug? <laughs> Whatever con convinced the police that, that let me go that day. They, they come look for me tomorrow. I don't care as long as I get away that day. That's how they matter. So they're going to sit here and keep... Think they're gonna get some type of information out of me. Okay. I'm a spin. Did you realize that all your interviews you were the person who brings up Thug first? Cause he's a bigger fish than me. Now, do you specifically remember what it is that you would make up on Thug? Whatever came up, whatever the police could say, they could have said breaking their cars. Whatever, whatever they wanted, not not saying breaking the cars, but whatever to convince them that I helped them for them to let me go, I would have said it. So in that case, why didn't you tell the police that Thug killed Nut? Because the police weren't gonna go for that. You gotta, you gotta be more specific. You gotta be really than that. You gotta convince them. You gotta make them feel like you really tell them they know this man did I didn't kill nobody. That would have been stupid for me to go in there and say Thug killed him. Okay. You said that you never talked to Thug after you left the feds. Did you ever talk with Dolly? No. Hey, I don't know. What you mean? To my, when I got out? Yes. Oh. Uh, um, I can't recall. I don't. I can't recall. But I never talked to Thug. I, I got the feds. Do you remember telling Detective Viverito that you actually saw Thug in the club once you got out of the feds? I told you again, they got me. I know who they want, who I, who they after. So I'm real. Okay. Now, 
Now, in 2021, were you, did you feel guilty about the fact that you had previously told on Thug back in 2015? If I told on him back in 2015, he would have been in jail if he did anything I said he did. Do you recall telling investigators a bit Marito that the real reason you don't like going around thugs is because you felt guilty that he that you had snitched on him? Uh, if you know anything about me, I don't I don't care for real. Like in real life, I don't be caring about nothing. I I act like I do, but I really don't. Is it true that in the same October interview you said to Detective Viver, excuse me, Viverito. I'm not going to talk at the jail at all because I'm telling you my life is on the line. You don't understand how how it make me feel when I go around. The truth, when I go around, dude, I know what I done done. So I don't want to be around him because of guilt. That's why I don't want to be around because I'd be afraid. I can't look a nigga in the eye because I'd be like, damn, this nigga know. That's why I'm going around. I ain't want to tell y'all that. That's why I can't sleep at night because I know him. I know what I done. I know the information that I gave. Y'all sit here and play like this shit ain't valuable. All y'all want. I told y'all like I know. Okay, what you asking me? You asking me, did I say that? I'm asking you, did you feel, yes. One, did you tell the detective that? Yeah, I tell him, I told you, I got to convince you, especially with Rio. She swear she know everything. So I was having fun spinning her. Okay, but you told her that's because I also told her that uh, those who do something to, to somebody that same day, and then they took me to jail, and nothing happened that day. So clearly, if you take anything I say, you, I'm done. All right. Now, in twenty twenty two, did you go end up going back to prison? Say that again. In twenty twenty two, did you end up going back to prison? I went, I went to state prison. I don't know when, though. Okay. And while you were in state prison, did you talk to Little D from Mechanicsville on the phone? I don't, I don't know. I can't. I, I can't recall. Do you recall ever talking to him at all? While I probably there? have. I, I just, I just can't say. Yeah, I don't keep up with who I talk to uh, on a jail call. I probably did have bored or something. I don't know. Isn't it true that in April 2022, did you call little D and told him that you were aware that a RICO, 43 person RICO case was was coming down? I probably did. Ain't no telling. And that because the RICO was coming down, that you all need to get off of IG, get off of Instagram? Yes. I love the D to death, so... If I'm, if, I'm, if I'm plotting, I'm, I'm going to get the D to plot along with me. So I'm going to go to the D so the D can be my backup. And as it relates to um, Little D, do you recall him having an Instagram name of Scarface? Uh, yeah, I guess, yeah. And do you recall? Oh, excuse me, excuse me for cussing. <laughs> Do you recall um, DMing him that they were trying to indict you all on that body? You said I didn't like you that? Yes. I don't know. I don't recall me DMing him that. Commissioner Post. Next. I'm going to show you why this told you wasn't marked as State Exhibit 381. Why? Again, your Instagram name was 725 underscore we. What happened? Your Instagram name. Again, it was 725 underscore Woody. A lot of people had my Instagram. I ain't seen that message. Okay. Do you oh. see what that message says? Nah, I just heard you what you said. Okay. Are you able to read what's on that page? That circle that red? I heard what you just said to say it. Do you recall sending that to him? He 
can you tell me what the date is? Sure, on October 6, 2021. Was I in jail? I don't know, were you in jail? Then I just ask you? I, don't, I know that you got arrested on October 27, 2021. So before that, before getting arrested on October 27th, were you in custody at all prior to that? So this was before I went to jail? Yes. So why would I DM him? Why would I message him and say that? First answer the question. Is that your Instagram name? Listen, I, 725 underscore week. I would not do nothing so stupid like that. I would not message nobody saying that. Why would I say that? Okay. So you don't recognize that as your Instagram name? I don't miss I don't recognize it. Me DM and no look D talking about some date. No. I know how the police operate. Why would I why would I do that? Why did you think that you and D were going to get indicted for Yes. <clears throat> Speak into your mic if you don't mind. To my understanding, this exhibit is not in evidence. That's correct. And I'm going to object to the publishing of this exhibit through. I don't think she's going to publish it. You don't intend to publish it, do you? Because it's not in evidence. Okay. And we're almost. I'll just further my objection, Your Honor, that it, <clears throat> it assumes facts that are not in evidence. Your Honor, I'm going to move on from that last All question. Right. Now, you said that everything you told the police, you made it all up. When did you make it all up? You keep saying everything. I keep telling you, like, I, I know how to piece stuff together real good. The stuff you made up, whatever parts you said you made up, when did you make it all up? As I go. Okay. Did you make it up with anyone else? I don't recall. I didn't get me like that. Okay. Mr. Copeland, isn't it true that you are well, you're supposed to be testifying under an immunity agreement? Um to be honest with you, I don't know. I don't have a clue about none of this stuff. I told y'all from the start, y'all to put me in here. But I don't comprehend. I don't told y'all that time after time. I don't know what the immunity agreement is. I don't, I don't, I don't have a clue. Like, I'm up under so much pressure. Like, man, I don't know. I, I don't even know how to answer y'all questions because I don't know what type, like, I don't know. I'm trying to be as truthful as possible. And y'all keep going back into the past. Like, I, and I told y'all when I was talking to y'all in the back, man, I have lied. And y'all don't put me up on here telling me that I got to be truthful when I'm telling y'all. Man, I don't know. Man, I, I, I'm afraid for my life. I, Every time y'all call me here, I think y'all could take my life, take my freedom. And, and, and at this point, I can't call on nobody for help. I don't know what's going on. Were you told before you testified that anything you testified to in the courtroom could not be used against you? Can you say that again? Before you took the stand, were you told that anything that you testified to in court could not be used against you? What you mean? Before you took the stand, were you told by myself, Ms. Love, anyone sitting at this table that anything you testified to could not be used against you? Anything I testified to can't be used against me? Yes. Yeah, I heard, I heard, I don't buy, I don't, yeah, I, yeah. Yeah, and matter of fact, last week, didn't you ask the judge? You turned around and you asked her, nothing I said could be used against me, right? Oh, oh, judge. okay. Okay. And isn't it true that under this immunity agreement, you were told that you could be charged with perjury? You said I could be charged with who? Perjury. I don't even know what perjury is. Okay. Were you told also in this immunity agreement that you could be charged if you committed false swearing? I was told, I asked specifically so I can understand. I asked you, I said, uh, what, what, what happened when y'all locked me up? Y'all told me two things I go to jail for. If I plead the fifth, and if I say that I had uh, 
committed a crime that I didn't do. Okay. So I don't know what perjury means. I don't, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm afraid for my life. And I told y'all that. I told it to my lawyer. I tell it to the judge. I tell it to everybody. Y'all got me up here. I don't know what's going on. And like I said, I, from, for the crimes that y'all charged me with, I went to jail. I did all my time for it. Y'all still bring me in here. I feel like I'm, I'm still in, I'm almost, I'm, I'm on trial at this point. I'm going to jail because I don't, I don't know. Y'all got me up here asking me questions. I don't know how to answer these questions. Y'all want me to be a witness to something I don't know nothing about. Is it true that even with the immunity agreement, you did not want to testify? Can you explain it? Sure. Even when you were given immunity, you did not want to testify. No, I, and I still don't want to testify. And is it true that you feel that you were pressured by the state to testify? I feel like I, I was pressured by both sides, the state and the defense. Okay. And is it true that you told me in front of these jurors a couple of weeks ago you felt pressured to testify? And I still, right now, I, I feel pressured to testify. Because it's not, it's not like I'm up here to be, to, to, it's not, I can't sit here and tell y'all, I can't sit here and tell y'all nothing. I don't, I don't, I don't know what y'all want me, I don't know what y'all looking for. I didn't, I didn't see nobody kill nobody. I didn't see nobody rob nobody. I didn't see none of these boys do anything. I, I did some stupid things. I got caught for the stupid things that I was doing. And I, I just went from there. Like, I didn't. And then y'all got me up here. And I told y'all before y'all put me up here. Y'all can't talk me out like a Tuesday or something. And it, you can't talk me in the streets. And I told you, like, I lied. And I told you that. And then y'all still brought me in here. Isn't it true that you did not want to testify because you don't want to be, deal with the reality of being labeled a snitch? Um, Miss, Miss, Miss Hilton, I was being labeled a snitch way before I had to come to trial when y'all linked that video out to the social media. Okay. So the world looked at me as a snitch no matter what goes on to this day. But me coming here, like I have put my faith in God's hands. And I come here and I let it be known. I guess got no choice but to be letting known to y'all now that I have told y'all time after time that I done lied. Okay. And a snitch is someone who actually tells the truth, correct? This is here to die. I mean, like, I feel like I got the world on my back now. You ask me these questions, like, I don't know, man. Like, y'all draining me. I mean, like, for real. It's a different if I sat here and seen somebody commit a crime. And then I saw them with my own eyes do this. And then I get in here and say, I didn't see them do that. Y'all want me to sit here and say, oh, uh, the, the, the stories that I have put on other people. And, and I didn't. Like, I, I, I would not do that. Like, it, and, and, and Lord knows I want to be with my family and my kids. But y'all going to put me back in jail because I won't, I won't sit right here and tell y'all what y'all believe to be whatever y'all want me to say. Like, I, I mean, I don't want to go to jail. But, man, at this point, I don't. Man, y'all, y'all got me, man. I don't know, man. I can't sleep at night. Like I'm, I tell you, y'all hold me in jail. Don't feed me. Don't give me water. Like if, I, I just don't know. Like every time I walk in this door, I, I just, I pray and hope I get walk back out this door. I just want to be left alone. I paid for my punishment, and I don't told y'all for y'all put me right here in this seat. Time after time, I told Judge Glanville in his office. I don't told everybody. I can tell, and I'm telling to your face. I know you don't have anything to do with you. You doing your job. But I'm, I'm, I've been nice to you, and I've been telling you that you, you can't put me up here, and, and, and I told you, I done made it up. Okay. It's a difference if I seen one of these guys actually do something, and you ask me, did they do it? You, if you ask me, did they do something that I actually saw them do it? And I would tell you, yeah, I saw him do that. Yeah, I was with him when he did that. But this is not the case. And you just told police what the Mickey I told you, correct? I told the police. Anything to get them off of me. I was going through a phrase. People were shooting at me while I had my kid. And my only priority was by any means necessary to protect them with my whole fucking life. Judge, how you doing? Because they driving me crazy. Yeah, take a minute. Take a breath. Tell me, y'all. Stay here. Come here. Stay on the stand. Take some breaths. Calm down. And once he finishes his breath around the state, um, we conclude our questioning around. Uh, well, are, do you have any more questions? No. Okay. Judge, can I go home? Right. No, you, you, it may be that some of the defense attorneys or all of them might have questions for you as well. So we're not quite finished yet. Uh, so take a minute.
Come on, Ray. Don't really get it over with. All right.